So people have lots of different ways of converting units. And I, if you have a way that works, great. But some people just kind of like start doing random things. They, they, they're like kind of see all these numbers and like, okay, multiply, divide, add. You know, they just kind of shout out different operations. And so that's not good. You should know that if what you're basically doing is taking a 50-50 guess at what operation to do, you don't actually know what you're doing. The SAT is good at varying these questions so that sometimes we're multiplying, sometimes we're dividing. It just depends on the circumstances. So you need a system that lets you get it right every time. Because if you get it right this time just by guessing multiplication, well, that's no good because, you know, it might not work next time when you need to divide. So here's a system that I like. Basically, you make a chart and it's gonna have two columns and anytime we have a rate or a conversion, we're just gonna write that down in the chart and we're gonna keep track of the units. So here, I just, I'm given two of them, right? One furlong is 220 yards. So I'm gonna write that like this. One furlong is 220 yards. Okay, so one unit on the left, one unit on the right. I wrote furlongs on the left because they're on the left in the thing. I wrote yards on the right because they're on the right in the in the conversion. That's it. It was literally just like the laziest thing to do, but I could have reversed them if I wanted to. For the next piece, I'm just going to keep going, adding rows to my chart, but every time I do it, I want to eliminate a unit. And the way to eliminate one is to have the same unit on the left side and on the right side. So this actually is really easy because look, the next thing that they give me is another conversion. And if I just follow it left to right, I'll put yards on the left very naturally and then feet on the right very naturally because that's just how it goes. But I'm putting it there specifically because what it lets me do is cross out the yards. If I have a unit on the left and I have it on the right, for all intents and purposes, that unit is dead. I've killed it. And I wanna be left with no units at all. So that's the goal. So I don't kill the, the number, right? So I, I don't get rid of that 220. I just get rid of the fact that that was 220 yards. The yards are done. So my goal is to get rid of everything. And I am, I'm just basically gonna look for other units, either feet or furlongs within the question. And I don't see feet really, but I do see furlongs, 112. So I'm gonna do that. But now I'm gonna write that on the right side because I already have furlongs on the left side. And so now what I can do is the same thing I did to yards. I have furlongs on the left, furlongs on the right, so they're gone. And the only thing left is feet. But notice there's no more numbers for me to plug in, but that's okay. Because even though I only wrote one number this time, there were really two numbers involved. One of them I don't know, it's an X. And it's X feet, so go back to the question. Right, they really did give us a bit of a unit conversion here, right? A distance of 112 furlongs is equivalent to how many feet? Right, we don't know it, how many is code for X, but that's a conversion and that's kind of where we're ending. And when I do that, when I include both the furlongs and the feet, not only do I have a complete row, but now feet get canceled out as well. And look, all my units are gone. Now I know that I've got everything in the right place and I'm about to do the right math. So this is a very way, good way to say organize. This one maybe is not so hard, but like they're gonna get harder. And if you have a good system in place for the easy ones, it'll be very easy to use that same system for the hard ones. So let's take a look. What do we do next? The last step of this is we basically multiply down, multiply down both columns and see what we get, right? So one times one times X is just X. 220 times three times 112. I'm gonna use my calculator for that, okay? 120 times three times 112 is, uh, oh, sorry, 220. See, this is why you write things down, because occasionally you enter them in the calculator wrong, is 73,920. And the last piece of this is there's an equal sign between those two columns. So. In this case, I'm just done. X is equal to 73,920. Sometimes there'll be like a number in front of that X and then we just treat it like an equation and divide both sides by that number to make it go away and to get to where we are now. X equals a single number. So sometimes it just works out, but there might be one last step occasionally. But here, that's it. That's the answer. X, which was, remember, the number of feet is 73,920. So we would just enter that into the, uh, the answer form. We don't need the comma and we would not want a round or anything like that. They, they ask for the specific number and we can put in five digits for positive numbers and uh, six digits slash spaces for um, negative numbers. So here, positive number, just the five is good and that's all we've got anyway. So we're all set. But um, like I said, this is a good example of a process that is, you know, may seem kind of 
unnecessary on a question like this. I think it's kind of intuitive for most people to just multiply, but uh, you know, there will be other cases where it's much harder. And I just want to make sure that when the hard stuff comes, you've got a good system because you don't want to waste points anywhere. And this is a, a, a system that works whether the question is easy or the question is hard. So if we understand it when it's easy, we're ready when it's hard.